Hello, hello. Welcome to another week, another live. Um, it's Wednesday. Hope you're having a fabulous week so far. Looking forward to having a great conversation with uh, a dear, dear friend and a colleague. Uh, <clears throat> I will be asking her to join um, shortly. Uh, meanwhile, while we're waiting for people to join us, please, if you're here and if you um, want to be in a relationship already, are in a really committed relationship, wherever you are in the spectrum and would like to know how to um, sustain a healthy relationship. First of all, what is a healthy relationship and how can we sustain it? Go ahead, let your friends know, let your loved ones know, and um, I'm gonna ask Nushin to join Okay, while we're waiting for her to accept the request. Hello, Nushi. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here today. It's so great to have you. Thank you. Uh, fine. Dr. Nushi Talini Fajon is a dear, dear friend, a colleague. And I'm honored to have you on today. Um, for those of uh, the viewers that might not know you, let me give you a brief um, introduction and a bio of the, all the wonderful things that you do for our community and um, for your clients. So Dr. Nushin Tali Nikvajom is a psychoneurologist and she specializes in treatment of anxiety, trauma, phobia, anger management, PTSD, and relationship therapy. She's the author of two books, uh, Making a Commitment for Love and Psychoneurology of Relationship and Related Case Studies. Among many, many other wonderful things that you do, I will let you, if I left anything out, I will let you to complete and tell, it, tell a little bit more about yourself and to the viewers. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can. I can. <laughs> Perfect. I'm so glad I'm here. I mean, uh, most people know me, I think. I've been on social media so much that I think a lot of people have been on my website and seen, you know, cruise around and saw what I do. But uh, as a psychoneurologist, I just want to make a distinction. I do not diagnose anyone. As psychoneurologists, we say, feel that everybody is complete and whole. And the reason that they come to see us is because they like a certain resource at the time. So my job as a psychoneurologist is basically, I might talk a lot more than the client because I need to imprint on them. And I use techniques instead of uh, medication or anything else. And uh, a lot of times, like 99.9% .9 of the times, the, um, we have been able to take them off some kind of medications under their doctor's supervision. So it's not that uh, we are against medication, some people need it, but uh, that's how we run our business basically with our clients. And we, we just talk about happiness. I mean, that's what we're here. So. Our main, Great. yeah. Talking main. about happiness. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that's a million dollar question. How do we get to be happy? And um, one thing that I've been realizing is that mm -hmm. people that are in a relationship uh, want to know what that healthy relationship is. And before we, I think before we get into the how to, I like to give an introduction of what really is a happy relationship, what is considered a happy relationship. Um, when we say happy relationship, it's not one size fits all, in my opinion. Everybody has their own um, needs and desire and wants and goals. So it's, it's, it's a decision that two partners decide between themselves that what is happiness actually. And to those of you that are watching and are not yet in a committed relationship, my number one um, suggestion, recommendation is never ever get in a relationship because of need. 
That need could be financial need, emotional need, security, status, whatever that is. The minute the partner stops giving you that what you want, you feel that void inside you again. You feel that lack within you again. So a healthy relationship starts with self, mm -hmm. first and foremost. How do I love myself? How much do I value myself? How much do I respect myself? Because it is then and only then that we can um, fully participate in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Very true. You just touched upon something extremely, extremely important. And for that reason, I always give this example. I would say, if you want to give somebody a blessing, or in Hebrew they say sedagah, or in mm -hmm. Farsi or you know some kind of donation, do you always give it from the pocket that is full or the pocket that is empty? Beautiful, I love that. Yeah, so we cannot go into a relationship based on our needs. And you, what you said is extremely important because I have, I mean, I've been dealing with clients who did that. Either, you know, some of them say she needed me or he needed me, still doesn't make sense. Um, the, the most important thing is self-love, self-respect, self-care. They all go into the same, same category. Exactly. If you, you fill up yourself from the inside all the time, you know? And uh, that's what self-love is. Self-love means I am happy, I am content with who I am. No matter how I look, what I do in life, I'm just, I accept myself. And this is like, uh, uh, I mean, it becomes like a cliche a lot of times because um, especially in EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, when I teach it, I always say, you have to say the affirmation, I love and accept myself, mm -hmm. even though I have this issue, you know, whatever the issue it is. And I always say, even if you don't love and accept yourself, fake it until you make it. <laughs> because your subconscious mind is listening. So Absolutely. every day, I love myself. Or if you go look in the mirror, as a lot of times like Byron Katie, Louise Hay, these people talk about these things. Look in the mirror, look into your eyes, and just say, I love you. And you, you're giving your subconscious mind a message that you're being loved. But your subconscious mind might not know that this is coming from you at the moment, but it gets registered in there. So, I, I always say, I'm sorry to cut you off, I, I, I always say you can't hate yourself to change. It's, it's impossible to hate parts of your body, part, part of your, your behavior, whatever it is that you're not 100% satisfied with. If you belittle it, mark it, hate it, there is no way that you can change that. So mm -hmm. if you come from a perspective of loving it, not loving it to a point that... Um, it's exaggerated, but it, you know, accepting it, accepting that there is a flaw in here or there's a part of me that needs to change and lovingly, gently moving toward changing it rather mm -hmm. than wanting to change it with hating it. It becomes so much easier. And as you said, the subconscious yeah. mind is always listening. Hating it, uh, actually, anything that we hate, we get more of. Absolutely. So anything we love, we get more of. It's the same concept. So why don't we change it to love instead of hate? You know, yeah. happiness yeah. instead of sadness. I mean, the amount of calories or energy that you spend to be sad is equal to the amount of energy and calorie you spend to become happy. You just have to find what makes you happy. Absolutely. Now, Going back, um, we segue a little bit towards, I think we need to have a complete um, program about self-love because that's, it's, it's, it's a topic <laughs> for itself. Going back to the relationship, what is a healthy relationship? Um, a healthy relationship, I think it, it's a relationship that is based on trust and 
of course, we talk about responsibility, communication, trust, all of that. But more so, it's like an interdependent um, coexisting with each other. I, by myself, am whole and complete and have self-esteem, self-confidence, and have my own goals. My partner has the same. And together, we, we have a common goal as a team. And mm -hmm. we become each other's cheerleader. We give each other feedbacks. But at the same time, we are cheering each other to be successful, to be uh, whoever they want to be without the fear of being judged. You know, in a relationship, I think the happy relationship is where we can speak to one another without the fear of being judged. We, we can be vulnerable with each other without the fear of uh, that vulnerability is going to be used against me when an argument arises, which we see a lot of uh, in, in uh, relationships. So it's coexisting while you're still maintaining your own identity. Very true. And uh, I want to add to that, uh, we are completing each other as partners. We are not competing with each other. You know, when you are happy with who you are and your partner is happy with who they are and you are going towards the same goals in life. I mean, you can have your own life. I always say, um, take time off with your friends. If you are a, if you're a woman, take time off with your girlfriends, maybe for a couple of days of day trips or something like that or for the same thing with the guys, because you want to be refreshed. It doesn't mean that um, you want to get away from your wife or husband. It means that you want to go refresh, come back, and have a more enjoyable union with each other. And, always, and remember, what you, you said something that was very important. We see a lot of times that people blame each other for their you know, uh, whatever they lack in life. Because in a relationship, we are mirrors of each other. And that causes us to have our buttons pu being pushed. Because there are a lot of times that um, uh, a lot of us did, do not work on ourselves. So if our partner comes and says something, we really take it personally and say, and say he or she is blaming me and, uh, you know, I did something wrong and then we get upset. And then, I mean, these are, these are very minute things in life, but the, when they gather on top of each other, little fights start. Yes, uh, that's a very important point that you brought up, uh, blaming each other. I mean, mm -hmm. when things are going well, we have no problem taking credit for it ourselves. And yeah. the minute something goes wrong, we point a finger. It was his problem, you know, fault, or it was hers. <laughs> and the, the thing that I always say to couples is, you are responsible for the health of your relationship 100%. Relationships mm -hmm. are not 50-50. So if you are responsible for the health of your marriage, 100%. If something goes wrong, if there is an argument, if there is a misunderstanding, whatever that comes up, ask yourself without blaming yourself now. Now, sometimes they say, you know, when I say this concept, they say, oh, so it was my fault? No, it's, it's not your fault. It's just learning from what is happening at the moment. What could I have done differently? How did I contribute to this situation? And what can I learn from this so that the next time something like this comes up, I'm ready for it. I can, I can have a different um, response. Mm -hmm. So instead of pointing fingers at your partner, go within and see what it, what it was. What, as it might be hard in the beginning because you, we do, naturally, by default, we don't want to take responsibility. And a lot of times people say, Okay, I get it, but that particular time, it was really, really, really her fault or his fault. Even then, it needs to be looked from 
your point of view and what you can do differently. Now, remember, if you are 100% responsible, then you become responsible for anything that goes wrong in the relationship. Very so, true. Yes. Very, very true. I mean, and then I always say learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. Mistakes are be the best ever in our life. And when you talk about self-love, self-gratitude, self-respect, self-care, they all come in the same category. And I just want to ask everyone, if, uh, if they come up with things that bother them, why don't you write a list that, you know, all the things of all the things that you're good at yourself. All the things that your partner does that are positive and you love. First, bring up all the positive stuff. Write them down. Because when you write something down, you have something to look at. It's a better reminder. Oh, and then, then think about what went because you have the good stuff and you go to the good stuff, you read them, and you see that you have a good, uh, tons and tons of good qualities. We each and every one of us, we have tons of good qualities. I'm not talking about narcissism and you know, all that stuff. So don't get me wrong. I'm talking about the fact that we often forget how good of a person we are. And if we write those things And how down, good of a person our partners are. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying write about yourself and then write about your partner. And then you see, oh my God, my partner has so many good qualities that we, after a while, we take everything for granted because we forget. As you mentioned before, when at the beginning of a relationship, we are in love. So, you know, whatever the other person does, we don't even see. And then years pass and problems come up. You know, we are all human. If we have kids, kids, kids can create a lot of, a lot, a lot of arguments because I was raised some, you know, in a different way. My husband was in a different, you know, raised in a different way. So we want to bring all those learnings into raising our kids, no matter it's right or wrong, because we don't know what somebody did or how we were raised. It was not really a correct way of being raised. So we want to apply the same thing to our kids. And that's like the first moment, maybe in some marriages, that issues start and they start arguing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, remember where your partner comes from. Um, I'm very, very big on that. Uh, people argued with me before on social media because of something. I said, when you're in a relationship, go into your uh, prospect, you know, partners, family and see how they were raised because you know people can play games up to certain certain time you know to a certain you uh, know what do you call it degree degree yeah i mean we can all play games and yet we can all say we are not this the way we are but after a while when you get to know a person and their family they cannot play i mean they become comfortable with you. When people get comfortable with you, they show their real self. Absolutely. That side is he or she that is the right person for me. Mm. This is for people who are, you know, looking for a partner. You mentioned the, you mentioned the point that uh, life happens and, uh, you know, we, what happens in a relationship in the beginning, as you mentioned, we are in love. We're in a honeymoon uh, stage. Everything is new and exciting and passionate. And then life happens. Kids mm -hmm. come in, uh, in, you know, uh, to our lives. And uh, um, work plays a big role. Family plays a big role. And we become so um, consumed with everything else <laughs> that we take the relationship for granted. We don't pay the same attention to 
uh, the relationship. And after a while, we realized years passed and we have gone our separate ways. It become the relationship, as, as, as I call it, has gone into autopilot. Mm -hmm. And each person does their own thing. You know, they have maybe some family time together, taking the kids to soccer or to swimming or, you know, just talk, chatting very fast during lunch or breakfast or whatever it is. And then each person goes um, and does their own thing. Mm -hmm. We become a passive participant in the relationship. We don't take um, that same level of um, persistent uh, care, passion that we had in the beginning. And it's very, very, very important for the sake of the relationship, for the health of the relationship, to become active participant of that relationship. I mean, it's, we, as you said, we take it for granted. Relationships cannot be taken for granted. Every single day, it's like you have a beautiful pot of flower. You, you water it. You give it enough sun. You give it enough attention. Same goes with our relationship. What, what it is, is it that makes the relationship a passive, just it is what it is. And, uh, you know, my partner is here. I'm doing my things. And we allow it to kind of fizzle out. So it's very important to have quality time with your partner. And when we have quality time with your partner, it's not like we sit and talk about kids, we talk about you know, work and what happened at work, why am I so miserable at this? Get to know your partner all over again. Because we change, our, our values change. Mm -hmm. uh, our values change. So it's necessary to get to know your partner all over again. Mm -hmm. Very true. And uh, I notice a lot of people who are um, when you are age, if our parents are alive, that's another, you know, another challenge and um, yeah, taking away from our attention and time um, that we might have to be putting that time and energy into our partners. We, I mean, there's so much time during the 24 hours a day and um, we have to be careful. Be respectful of your in-laws, no matter what your relationship with them is, because, um, I mean, we all have parents, if they are, you know, they're alive, I mean, I hope they're all happy and healthy, but that's another thing that uh, we need to understand that the partner needs to understand, the wife or husband needs some time with their parents because they're elderly and they need our help. So these are, these are important things that as you said, we take everything for granted. We forget to talk to each other or, you know, they say that um, the husband or wife becomes <laughs> like a piece of furniture. I say they become your roommates. So when you become your roommates, at least still understand that this is the person that you fell in love with long time ago. Excuse so, me just for a second. I I'm, I have a back uh, background noise that I uh, wanted to go. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, working on yourself, learning new things, having hobbies, sharing that with your partner, bringing new uh, excitement into your relationship, no matter how many years you have been married. Because I see that, uh, you know, maybe a lot of people are not very young if they are watching this or i i saw different ages while i while people were joining i saw 40 years old <laughs> my niece was it's, on. A, it's a conversation that's for everybody, everybody. If, if if you're newly read if you're in yeah. a starting a relationship if like you and i've been in a relationship for we don't want to say how many years, many years. <laughs> it's yeah. it, it applies. It's, 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 you know, yeah. It does. Make sure that 
you never ever forget that and, res uh, go respecting ahead. your partner, respecting yourself, respecting your partner is extremely important in the way you communicate with each other. Accepting each other for who they, you know, for who the person is. That means we all have, I mean, challenges in our lives. We all have lacks and, you know, we, have, we all have negative um, aspects of our personalities, but we are who we are. So if I can accept myself for who I am, I expect my partner to do the same thing about me. Absolutely. And you know, a lot of people think that when, if they are uh, in love and they have a healthy relationship, that means that they never argue, they never disagree, oh. they, they um, you know, move through life with harmony. And so that's, that's, even in uh, stories and movies, that's not the case. No. Every single person that has been in a relationship argues, fights, disagrees. I mean, as you said before, we come from two completely different backgrounds. And a lot of times we disagree with our own self. We, we oh. change constantly. One day I feel like this, the other day I feel like something else. So how is it even possible that two people that come from totally different backgrounds, different values, uh, different belief system, never argue about anything. Argument actually, to me, a healthy way of arguing actually. It's healthy, it, it um, allows you to uh, open up your horizon. You, if, if you are willing to listen to your partner without bias, without judgment, uh, you learn new things, you learn a different way of looking at things. So mm -hmm. instead of standing firm on your belief and say, this is the way it needs to be, allow it to sink in and maybe there is a, um, something valuable in that. And mm -hmm. if there isn't, there isn't. We don't need to uh, be agreeing on everything to be in love and to be in a healthy relationship. You know, it's not that uh, everything needs to go smoothly before I say, oh, I have a, I have a good uh, relationship. We change, people change. And it's always good to be curious about your relationship and your partner's desire, their goals, what, what are their thoughts, their emotional state. So get curious to get to know your partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, try to learn new things. Absolutely, yes. Ah. And uh, the other thing is, uh, you mentioned is very important because if you're always lovey-dovey, it gets boring. It does. <laughs> it does. It really gets boring. Come on. It's good to not, I don't say to fight, but to have your own opinion, to talk about it lovingly. I mean... That's the most important thing. You are in a union, you are in a partnership, you are in a relationship. Love is uh, one of the most important ingredients of that. And that's why we keep talking about it. But um, um, I mean, my whole book is about <laughs> relationship. And I am a true believer that uh, experience uh, in a marriage is one of the most important, I mean, highest teachers in your life. There are not things that you can find in books, but when you experience life as you and I have, the I mean, I've been married for 37 years. I think you, you probably have been the same. Six, yes, almost yeah. the same. So we both have had tons and tons of ups and downs and those have been our teachers, not just the things, I mean, I went to school to learn about a lot of things, but, and I taught and I read a lot of books. Like, I mean, I taught about five love languages and other things and my book and, and uh, but our life experiences have been our best teachers. 
Yes. Because, I mean, I personally don't like to go to a therapist or a coach who has never, ever been in a relationship. You know, there are people like that. And they want to give me advice. Mm -hmm. Because what they are giving me advice on is based on theory. Yes. But we have lived it. We have raised kids. I have raised three kids. Now two, we have, I, I have two grandkids. You have two sons, amazing sons, you know. You've been there. You've been, you've, you've seen the challenges that your kids have gone through. So, and our relationship has gone through. Of our course. relationship hasn't been rosy all the time. We have, of course. We have gone through major roller coaster of um, events happening, you know, yeah. and we, we, we figured it out. And I want to add something to what you said very beautifully. I think if we want to just make the gist of what a, a healthy relationship is, is that you value the health of the relationship more than you value the urge to be right. Oh, oh that is you so know? true. Oh my God, thank yes. you. It's, it's, oh. you know, we, we forget that why we're arguing, why we're having this uh, disagreement, why we are having this fight. It's because of one common goal. It's because of the relationship and the higher goal, the bigger picture mm -hmm. that we have. But we get lost in uh, the, the uh, process of getting there by wanting to be right. I, yeah. This is how I believe and I need to be right. And that is detrimental to a healthy relationship. Always yeah. remember the bigger goal. Why, why are we having this argument in the first place? Very true, very true. I mean, they have to write this in gold, whatever you're saying. <laughs> but that's very important. I mean, a lot of fights start because of that, because he or she says, I'm right, and, uh, you know, everybody's yeah. right to some degree. <laughs> but, <laughs> so be very careful. I don't know how much time we have. We've been on, like, for half, half an, an hour. hour. It's like... Um... A few yeah. more minutes. If, I know some people have questions and they have um, DM'd mm -hmm. us uh, privately and they want um, answers uh, to be uh, said privately to them. So that's yeah. definitely. But if you have any question that we can, me and Nushin can answer, definitely go ahead, type your questions. If you want private answers, definitely DM us and we'll be happy to... Um, answer any question that you might have. Um, so I know that I want to keep these uh, lives short because I know people are busy. We need to get back to life ourselves. And uh, But promise me one thing that you'll come back because I know uh, this is a huge topic and there's so many things that we can talk about. And uh, I would love to have you back. Um, any any um, last minute thoughts that you might have? No, I would love to be back. I mean, uh, working on yourself is the most important thing. I keep, uh, I mean, I keep posting some of my videos again from 2020 when I started going on Facebook Live. And I always mention that it doesn't matter what age you are. There is never too late to learn a new thing, even go back to school to get your doctorate. I know Bonnie's husband went to school a few years ago. I mean, we went to school at the same time, I think. I, uh, we, all of us changed careers yeah. midlife. And, yeah. and that's okay. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. I, I was talking to someone, a 28-year-old 20 20 year male that was saying, uh, my life is a failure and I'm I, I cannot do anything. Seriously, at 28, you're just starting to learn. You're just starting to explore. We both changed careers midlife, and it's always, always till the day, the minute that you have a breath in you, there's always a chance. There's always time for you to learn something new, to do something new. Don't ever allow age to stop you from 
yeah. getting to what it is that you want. Very true. So I invite you to find what your passion is in life if you haven't found it yet. Because without passion, there is nothing. I mean, passion is what makes you get up every single morning with a smile on your face and look forward for a better day every day. So do your best. I'm not going to say try. In coaching, they don't use the word try because try equals failure <laughs> but especially in nlp coaching we yeah we, both of us are uh, master nlp practitioners yeah. so language becomes extremely important whether yeah. you're doing a self-talk or you're having a conversation with someone else using the right words it's absolutely important in yeah. in getting what you want or not very true so do your best write a list no matter what age you are. I'm keep, I keep saying that. Write the list of the things you, have, you always wanted to do in life and never got a chance to, even if you're 20 years old, even if you're 70 years old. And see if you can do any of those things that you never had an opportunity to finish or to start. And do it. And sometimes that brings so much joy and happiness to your life that that joy and happiness radiates in the household mm -hmm. and makes everybody else happy. Especially if you're a woman or a man, father or mother of the household, your happiness brings joy to the, to the family uh, unit. Absolutely. So it's important. Make yourself, yeah. I'm not saying go do <laughs> bad stuff, when I say bad stuff, I don't say cheat or, you know, go fulfill this kind of desires. Empowering I'm... things, things that, things that move your uh, relationship in the right direction and enhances mm -hmm. your love for each other. Yes. Yeah. Learn new things and do that with your partner if you can. If not, you have a new thing to talk about. So the boringness of the relationship, if there is some, it's gonna change. And it becomes, you know, something that we are eager to uh, look forward to seeing each other every time when the door of the house opens up. <laughs> so. Very we... good, very good. Yeah, I appreciate one another. And last thing I wanted to say, um, you know, when we are talking about our partners, if only negative comes up, like we only see the faults, mm -hmm. I invite everyone that is watching us to immediately change that and come up with five virtues, five good qualities about your partner. Remember why you fell in love with that person. What were the qualities that attracted you to that person? And come up with five uh, good qualities and immediately reframe it because for the energy of negative it's it's much bigger than the positive for each yeah. negative thought that we have to counter attack it and neutralize it we need five positive ones just to neutralize the negative so and we by default we tend to ruminate into the negative more this is one way that you can uh, shift the dynamic of the relationship and remember the good things rather than always remembering the negative things. Mm -hmm. Very true. Somebody just asked, what are the signs of good relationship? Mm. We've been talking about it. The signs of a good relationship to me is that each one of you separately have your own identity, you have your own goals and desires, and together you have a common goal together. You, uh, a healthy relationship is when you can talk to your partner about anything, emotionally, uh, whatever it is that uh, it's in your head, you feel safe speaking about it. There is a trust between you, not just trust that he's not going to cheat on me or she's not going to cheat on me, but trust that I can be open and vulnerable to this person and be heard, be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. And uh, having healthy boundaries, knowing that what is okay for me and what is not okay for me, what is off limit for my partner and respecting those boundaries. 
and I let you add to it uh, if if you have anything else to add to that. Something I mean, very important too. You need to listen to each other, not hear each other. Beautiful. Listening is fully, completely giving your attention to that person, and as you said. No judging and no blaming. Please, please, please don't blame each other for stupid things that come up in the relationship. Things happen. I mean, maybe somebody else pushed your buttons, uh, you know, during the day and you, you see your partner and you want to basically, I don't want to say this, but I mean, barf it out on them because sometimes you're so upset because somebody else said something that we feel so comfortable with our partners that we just want to give it to them. It's not sharing. It's just like if they say, oh, I, you know, your, your rice had too much salt in it, for example. I mean, this is like, you know, everything is so common in marriages. We start arguing with them. And we are bad mouthing, you know, bad mouthing them because somebody this morning said something to me and pushed my button, but I couldn't say anything to that person. So let me bark on you and not on that person because I can't <laughs> get a hold on that. So your partners are there. You need to respect them no matter who they are. And sometimes, you know, we need to vent. We need yeah. to bark. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. be specific about it. Say, you know what? It's uh, what I'm saying is not towards you. I'm just emptying myself. I'm just it's venting. Um, it's it's not about you. I just had a horrible day, and I need someone to listen to me. And just go on venting. Mm -hmm. In that case, that person realizes that okay. This is not towards me. It has nothing to do with me. I will allow her or him just to vent, just to morph until their, their tank is empty and they can be calm. Just, yeah. just be a vessel to them for them that they can be heard. That's all. Yeah. And no, no comments. No That's comments. It. Very important. Yeah. Is there anything that you want me to do at this moment? Is yeah. there, you just, do you want me just to be here for you? And that is the communication that we are talking about. And I think we need to have a uh, communication life because there's so many steps in uh, healthy communication that sometimes we uh, forget when we are in the middle of an argument or a disagreement or just venting, uh, and we we dismiss them. And they are part, you know, steps in a communication that can really, really. Uh, enhance the health of your relationship very true very true yeah very good again thank you for joining me it was a pleasure seeing you as always your energy radiates <laughs> and i love what you do please keep doing the wonderful things that you're doing in the community and hopefully we can connect soon again thank you so much love and light to all of you guys yes and for any questions to me and uh, uh, Nushin, if you want us uh, to answer any question, you can DM us and we'll be happy to answer any question you have. Definitely. Take care, guys. Have a good weekend coming up. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.